Hey, hey everyone. everyone, welcome. Happy Wednesday, we're so glad you're here. Give everybody just a second to get into the room, uh, make sure everybody's ready before we start going over supplies um, and getting ready for our class today, for our uh, special Father's Day class. So uh, my name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. Um, and if this is your first class with Plaid, welcome. We're so happy to have you. We do lots of classes um, in the Michaels Community Classrooms. We're so lucky that we get to be here a couple of times a week um, on the Michael Sweeney classrooms, like I said. Um, so like I said, today we're going to be doing this really cute uh, Father's Day apron. So um, if your dad likes to cook or if your dad likes to grill, um, this is a really fun, unique gift that you can give to your dad using um, our new folk art sign shop stencils, um, some fabric Mod Podge, and um, some really great fabric from Michael. So Michael's has an amazing selection of fabric. Fabric is back at Michael, so we're really excited about that. So it works so well in conjunction with our uh, Mod Podge fabric. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to make this apron today. Um, and of course we have Emma Panuski um, here in the chat as well. So she will be here live to answer any of your questions. So please, if you have questions or comments, put them in the chat and Emma will either answer them herself or she'll relay them to me and I can answer them live. Yeah, hey everybody. Um, so is everybody in the classroom now? Yeah, I think we're ready to get started, Jess. Okay, cool. All right. So first, I'll let you guys know what supplies we'll need to get started today. So first, of course, I have my apron. So I bought this at Michael's. Michael's has a really great fashion selection. So they've got, of course, t-shirts. They've got a great variety of t-shirts. They've got these great bandanas. Um, they've got hats and totes and purses and all kinds of things. But they also have these really awesome canvas aprons. And what I love too is like a lot of times you can find aprons in the craft store with our kid sizes, but this is a full size apron as you guys can see when I held it up. So it's the perfect gift for dad. So again, whether he likes to cook or whatever, maybe he's an artist if he wants an apron, whatever your dad likes to do, this is a really great personalized gift for him. So of course you need your canvas apron. Um, I also have some extra fabric here. So on the original one, I used like an old flannel shirt or some great fabric from Michael's, but I should have a few more selections here that I think my dad will like, of course, that I got at Michael's. This is just a bandana, a cotton bandana. Um, so I got some of my fabric here that I'll be using. I also have my Mod Podge fabric. So Mod Podge fabric here, it's great for using um, fabric to fabric or really um, adhering fabric to other surfaces too. Um, and the best thing about Mod Podge fabric, it's machine washable. So when we're done with this apron, um, your dad can throw it in the wash to clean it in between his, uh, his grill out sessions. <laughs> And then I also have uh, my sign shop project uh, products today. So like I said, Folk Art Sign Shop, it's pretty new at Michael's. If you haven't heard of it, it's really, it has everything you possibly need for making your own signs. Whether you want to do home decor signs or gifts or, you know, uh, fairy garden signs or signs for your kitchen or farmhouse, it, we really have everything. So I have my big stencils here. These are my mesh stencils. So there's lots of variety. So you can see here in my, um, remember from the project listing, I used this nice serif font, which is really fun. Oops, I'm losing my pencil. This nice serif font, but I'm gonna use this fun like scribble font today. So again, these are some of our the bigger stencils. Lots of different things to choose from, lots of ways to personalize this. Um, if you walk down the uh, sign shop aisle at Michaels, lots of options for you to personalize your own apron or whatever it is that you happen to be using the sign shop stencils on. And then with my stencils, I've got my, um, my stencil paste. So. We have lots of um, great products, like I said, in the sign shop line. We have lots of curated uh, color palettes for you to choose from. We have smaller put ups of our uh, stencil paste. We can also get the larger sizes of black and white, which is great because I think that's one of the most common trends right now. It's like black and white farmhouse signs, but of course you can use those for mixing and stuff. You'll always need more black and white. So we've got our big put up. It's a um, almost three ounces of our black stencil paste. And then I've got my little um, a sign shop stencil brush here that I'll be using to apply it. I've also got a brush for my Mod Podge, some scissors, of course, for cutting our fabric, some water for cleaning my brushes, and a pencil. So it seems like a lot, but don't worry. I'll, I'll be letting you guys know what we're using as we go on. Just lots of little things I'm sure you already have, so no big deal. And Jess, before we get started, someone had a good question. They wanted to know, could they do this on a canvas tote instead? And does it matter the type of canvas, if it's like waxed canvas or cotton or whatever? That's a really great question. Um, so yeah, you can totally do it on a canvas tote. I absolutely love that idea. That'd be really fun. And again, keep in mind, guys, this stuff doesn't have to be for Father's Day. If you're not celebrating Father's Day this weekend, make an apron for yourself. Use fabrics you like, put your name on it, 
give it to a teacher, a great teacher gift. So just keep in mind, this is a really open-ended project. Um, but I love the idea of doing it on a tote and you absolutely can do this on a tote. I would always recommend having, um, washing your fabric first whenever you're doing any sort of fabric crafting, whether it's fashion or tote or whatever it is that you're using. I always recommend washing it before you craft on it. And the reason you wanna do that is because when the um, most of these pieces are being manufactured, they put some sizing into it and that keeps it really nice and clean um, and stiff and tidy in, uh, in shipment. So we put, they put sizing into the fabric, same with brushes and things like that. You know, we never get brushes and they're really stiff. We have sizing in those to keep the bristles perfect while it's getting to you. So when you get your brushes, you wanna rinse it off. It's the same for fabric. You wanna wash your fabric before you start putting things on it because you don't want anything in the fabric to resist any of the things you're putting on it, like paint or Mod Podge. So yeah, whatever fabric you're using, really any kind should work as long as, you know, maybe nothing too super textured, um, but just go ahead and wash it first and it should be good to go. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you guys how I like to apply fabric um, to fabric with Mod Podge uh, fabric. <laughs> how many times can I say fabric? <laughs> Um, so I don't think I'm going to do this bandana. I think my dad would like this bandana. Um, so again, Michaels has tons of bandanas. You know, this is a really classic thing um, you can buy at Michaels. And I'm going to use it instead of my, I'm going to kind of switch it up a little, show you a couple different varieties, but it's the exact same techniques. So if you're doing the flannel and you've got one of your dad's old flannel ocean thing, it's the exact same thing. Make sure you ask your dad before you go rooting in his flannel collection to cut yeah. up your shirt. <laughs> exactly. Don't steal your dad's flannels without asking. Great, great point, Em. Uh, okay, so I'm going to find, I'm going to start by doing this cute little bow tie. So I keep pulling this in, it's so big. Um, but you guys remember from the event listing, we got this really cute bow tie. So my dad's not really a bow tie kind of guy, but I'm still going to show you guys how to do it in case your dad is. Um, I just think it's a really fun, cute little uh, detail to add. So I'm going to show you guys how I cut out the bow tie. So since this one, this fabric's a little different, I'm going to kind of find a place that I like. I'll probably like do it right here so I can get that nice little pattern for my bow tie. So the first thing normally I would do um, whenever I'm cutting something detailed like this out of fabric, what you can do, I'm not going to do it today because I won't have time for it to dry, but I really want to make sure you guys know this, this uh, little tip. You can take your fabric Mod Podge, and I'll kind of just act it out for you guys. And you take a brush and you brush on a thin coat of fabric Mod Podge to your fabric and let it dry. Give it a couple hours. It doesn't need to be fully dry, but just so it's dry to the touch. And then when you go to start cutting out your piece, you'll get no fraying because all of the fibers will be sealed together. So whenever I'm cutting out lots of little details, if I have like a big floral piece and I want to cut out little flowers, I'll do a nice thin coat of uh, Mod Podge fabric over the whole piece of fabric. I'll let it dry. And then when I go back later and cut out details with my scissors, I can get really fine details and none of it frays because like I said, all the fibers are sealed together. So I highly recommend doing that and setting it aside you know, for just an hour or two until it's, you know, no longer um, wet to the touch before you start cutting out smaller details with it. Any questions on that yet? I don't think so. Not yet, Jess. I think we're ready okay, for cool. the start. So cool. So hopefully that makes sense. And like I said, I'm not going to do it today because of course you don't have an hour or two to wait and I didn't want to have it ready for you guys. I, I like to be able to craft together with you. So just keep that in mind for the future whenever you're doing fabric projects. Um, so I just have a pencil here. So I'm just going to quickly sort of sketch out what I want my bow tie to look like. So the key to making anything um, symmetrical or to, to making something that looks symmetrical is to make sure it's the same on either side. So I usually will kind of fold it in half and I'll draw one side and cut it out and then I can use it for my other side as well. So if that's confusing, I'll, I'll show you what I need. So I'm just gonna fold, I'm gonna kind of find where I want my little bow tie to be. Can you see that Emma? I just wanna make sure I'm in the camera. Yes, I can see that. Okay, so I see my, do my bow tie here. So like, say that's the middle. I'm gonna kind of fold my fabric there. So that can be my middle. So then um, grab some chalk or some, you know, whatever it is that you usually like to draw on fabric with, a pencil, you know, a Sharpie. If you're feeling a little bit risky, if you feel like you can cut inside the Sharpie, that should be okay too. But I'm just gonna kind of draw, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but I can see where it is. I'm gonna draw a half circle for the middle of my bow tie. So you guys see that shape, I'm making a half circle. And then I'm gonna draw sort of a triangle coming off of my half circle. And this is just one half of my bow tie. You can kind of see what we're doing. I'm gonna be cutting out one half. And since it's folded, when I open it up, it'll be a perfectly symmetrical um, bow tie. So I'm just gonna cut it smaller to make it easier real quick. A little bit more manageable. Okay, so again, I just did a half circle and then a little triangle coming off the side. And I, again, it's hard for you guys to see, but I can see it here in person. 
And Jess, Emily had a great question that I hope I answered correctly in the chat. She wanted to know, um, do you have to Mod Podge on both sides of the fabric before you cut out your shapes? Nope, just one side. One side will do the trick. It'll seal it all up so that when you go to cut out your shapes, you don't get any fraying, which is a game changer because you can see here, I probably will get a little bit of fraying because I didn't do that. Not bad because it's, you know, a nice cotton fabric, but um, so you can see here. Yeah. If I had stiffened it, it would be nice and stiff, really easy to work with. It'd also be easier to cut outside of just the fraying part. It'll yeah. stiffen it ever so slightly. So it'll be just, it won't be so soft. It'll be a little bit easier to cut, especially if you're trying to cut like tiny details. If you were going to try to cut like letters out of it or something, you know. So and I, um, run into, I run into an issue with my fabric fraying when I actually start to brush Mod Podge onto it. Right, which we may see in a second. So hopefully you didn't drink yourself <laughs> um, But she, Emma's right, it makes it easier to apply to your projects later on. So you can see how super easy that was and it's nice and symmetrical. So that's the great part about doing, cutting things that way is even if it's not um, perfectly straight, even if it's a little bit wonky, it's gonna be totally mirrored and that will help make it look neater. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So even if one side looks crooked, the other side's gonna be exactly the same crooked. So it's gonna look like you did it on purpose. So cute. So you really just folded a piece of fabric and then mm -hmm. kind of cut out a triangle attached to a little half circle. Yep, exactly. I cut out this shape. Triangle. So I did a half circle with a little triangle attached to it. And that is when I opened it up, my bow tie shape. Great, that looks great, Jess. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm also going to show you, I, on my original one, I added this really cute detail to the pockets, just so I could have some more of that really cute um, patterned fabric. So I'll show you guys how I did that. So I've got my fabric here, the rest of my fabric that we just used. I'm going to cut it down a little bit, just again, so it's more manageable. Just make sure you have enough before you go cutting it down. But I'm going to trim it so I can manage it a little bit easier when I'm trying to put it onto my pocket of my apron here. So I'm going to lay it on over my pocket. And I'm going to grab my pencil again or chalk or whatever it is, you know, if you have like one of those um, like purple pens that disappears on fabric, that's great too. Whatever you have, you just want to lay it really flat so your fabric is nice. I always recommend ironing it too, if you can, or tossing it in the dryer even, just so to get those wrinkles out so you can really get your um, stuff nice and flush. So I'm going to pull it down. I don't want that 100% cotton thing. So I'm going to lay it down nice and flat. I can feel, so what I'm feeling for here is I can feel the seams of where that pocket is. I can feel the edge of where the pocket is on it because I'm going to follow that with my pencil and that's how I'll have the exact same size and shape of the pocket to apply with my Mod Podge. And how do you feel mm -hmm. that seam, Jesse? just because it's a little bit more raised than the rest of yes. the fabric? So on this one, you can see here, it's got sort of this piping and it's got this little uh, seam all around it where the pocket is attached and it's raised off of the rest of the apron, of course, because it's a pocket. So you can really feel that easily through the fabric. So that's what I'm feeling for when I'm putting down my fabric. Um, and that's what I'm going to use as a template, really, to go around and trace my fabric um, so I have the perfect size um, piece of fabric. <laughs> Again, how many times can I say fabric in this class? Okay, so this feels good to me. So I'm just going to make sure I have it nice and, and flush where it's all going to be nice and clean. And I'm going to go around with my pencil and I'm going to mark around the edges of where my fabric is. And again, if you're using a dark fabric, I'd probably recommend using like chalk or something. I can see this pencil. I'm certain it's hard for you guys to see on camera, <laughs> but I can see the pencil in real life. Um, but if, you know, feel free to use chalk, or like I said, if you're feeling, you know, you could even use like a Sharpie, like just use it a thin Sharpie really lightly. Just make sure that you're kind of giving yourself some extra room so you can cut the ink part off. Um, or those like fabric pens are really great. The purple pens um, that disappear over time. So whatever it is you like to use for your fabric. Then we go up around the edge here. Just again, I keep feeling, you can see I'm moving my fingers. I keep feeling around to make sure that I'm following this pocket exactly. So I'll have a perfectly custom, and it doesn't matter if you got a different apron than me, um, you, you can just do this exact same thing to match whatever size and shape the pocket on your apron is. And you're trying to hold the fabric kind of taut as you go along, right? Yeah, I'm not necessarily holding it taut. I'm just holding it in place. So kind of like you can see kind of just wants to stay stuck to the fabric beneath it. It's just I have it nice and spread out. So it's nice and flat. So it's not moving at all. I'm just making sure that, you know, I guess I'm holding it taut so I can get the pencil down because the pencil is wanting to move it. Um, but if you have a pen or like a piece of chalk, that's probably not an issue. I really should, probably should do something better than a pencil, but this is just what I have. 
Okay, so I'm just making sure I can see my pencil line all the way around. And again, I know you guys can't see it on camera, but I can see it in real life. So use what you can see. Making sure I can see mine before I start cutting. So now I'm gonna start cutting out my fabric. So I'm just gonna follow my pencil line all the way around. You can always give yourself a little more room too. That definitely never hurts. Give yourself a little bit of room um, just in case you need it, in case you, you know, over snip. You know how they say measure twice, cut once. <laughs> they do say that. I don't know how they often say that. I know. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if we always listen, but that definitely is a go good rule to go by. Um, so yeah, so I'm just cutting it out. And like I said, I'm giving myself a little bit of extra room just in case I want, it's easier to go back and trim it later than to not have enough fabric. So I'm doing my best to give myself just a little bit of extra room. And I do recommend too, whenever I'm doing a project like this to have super sharp scissors. It's gonna be really hard to cut out perfect lines, um, it, even harder to cut out little details if your scissors aren't nice and sharp. So of course, you got fabric scissors, those are the ones to use um, and you know, only use them for fabric. That's how you keep them nice and sharp. But if you don't, I just have some nice Fiskars here that I bought at Michael's. These are just really classic Fisker scissors and they're nice and sharp and they work great for fabric as well. I'm just following my pencil line. And just a reminder too, as you're doing that to everyone that joined our class today, don't forget if you have any questions about Fabric Mod Podge or anything that Jesse's doing during this class, uh, make sure to uh, question, uh, put those questions in the chat and I'll either answer them myself or relay them to Jesse. Yeah, definitely. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to have, it's awesome to get to be here live with you guys so we can interact and answer questions and hear where you're from, hear what kind of crafts you're working on. We'd love to hear if you've got plans for Father's Day this weekend. If you're doing something else, let us know. We, we really love getting to chat with you guys. Okay, guys, so you can see now we've got our pocket here. We've got our bow tie here, and that was really super simple to do. So now what we're going to do is start applying it with our Mod Podge fabric. So I've just got a little plate here. If you've got some wax paper or something, that's great too. But I'm going to flip my bow tie over and I'm going to grab my Mod Podge fabric. And I should have an old flat brush here. You can use whatever kind of, you know, flat brush you had. You have like a chip brush, that's fine too, or a sponge even, a sponge brush is good. And I'm going to start, so I'd start from the middle and start uh, applying, my, brushing the fabric Mod Podge towards the outside. And I'm going to try to keep from getting um, any fraying that way. So I'm kind of starting in the middle and brushing out. You can see here, starting in the middle and brushing out. And I'm just working on this plate so that um, I don't get fabric mod podge on my projects or on my counter, but I really like using wax paper or like a silicone mat when I'm mod podging. Um, those are really great options or freezer paper, parchment paper, all of those things are good to use. So you can see it's kind of getting stuck to the plate now, but I start in the middle, I'm brushing out and I have very minimal fraying. So I'm glad about that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place it right at the top where a bow tie would be. I'm going to press down. You just want to make sure it's nice and flush. So you can take like some wax paper and press it down if you want to, if you, if you put wax paper over it and use like a brayer if you have something like that. But I'm just kind of using my fingers to make sure that it's nice and flat. If you have some frays, you can just kind of stick them back down because it's really saturated and not podge now. So it's easy to do. And that's how you apply the bow tie. Super, super simple. Great. Yeah. Hey, and Jess, while you get started with that, we have a great question. It's not about Mod Podge, but it's about another one of our products that we sell at Michael's. Okay. Someone wanted to know, um, could you ask our instructor today, um, is etching, um, is our etching product safe to use? Is it non-toxic? They really just want to know if it's non-toxic, our, our uh, glass etching cream. Our glass etching cream is not non-toxic. Um, so you do want to be careful. You can use it. Uh, you don't have to worry about ventilation because it doesn't have any fumes or odors. Um, but you don't want to get it on your skin. You do want to be careful to wear gloves. Um, when you're rinsing it, always wear gloves. Um, just because you, you really don't want to get it, you don't want it to, co to contact your skin. Um, right. But you, you don't have to work like outside or like in a well-ventilated area. It's okay if it's, um, there's no fumes. So it and is not non-toxic though. Yes. And that's just while, um, you know, you're working with like the wet product. But once it's totally right. finished and etched, obviously you don't have to wear gloves around it. Then it's ready to be 
Yeah, exactly. If you've done like a wine glass or something, once you've rinsed it off and, you know, throw it through the dishwasher to be safe, it's perfectly safe to use. It's just, it's the cream itself that is not non-toxic, is toxic, yeah. I guess. That's <laughs> a better way to say that. Yeah. <laughs> But that's a yeah. great product. If you guys have not tried our etching cream, it works so well. You just put a stencil on any kind of glass, smear some etching cream on it, wait 15 minutes, rinse it off, and your glass is etched. It's like magic every time. It's one of my favorite gifts to give. Yes, it is definitely my go-to gift idea as well. It's so inexpensive yeah. and so easy and so fast. Yeah, I grab some, you know, glass from Michael's or from, you know, my local dollar store or Goodwill or it's just stuff I have at home already. And I etch it and give it as gifts for Christmas, vases, you know, uh, casserole dishes. You can do any kind of glass. It's awesome. Yep. Okay. And just to clarify real quick, sorry. Yes, you can okay. use it indoor. You don't have to worry about being in a ventilated area. Great question. Right, right. All right, guys. So I have my piece of fabric here over my pocket. So I'm going to, since this is a bigger area, I'm going to apply this a little differently. We applied the fabric Mod Podge right to our fabric before, but I'm gonna apply it to my apron and then kind of press my fabric down just cause it's bigger and I wanna work, you know, kind of in smaller areas to keep it from drying. So I'm gonna grab some fabric Mod Podge and I'm gonna start, you'll need a very thin coat. You don't need to glob it on. You just want enough to cover the surface. I'm gonna start applying my fabric Mod Podge. You wanna make sure you get right to the edge so the fabric sticks really well and sticks everywhere you want it to stick. And I'm just gonna apply a nice thin, even coat of fabric Mod Podge to the area where my fabric will be. Just making sure I get right up to the edge, really thin. You guys can see how thin that is. I'm not globbing it on. You don't want to put too much, just enough to have a nice even coat. And then I'm gonna start laying down my fabric and kind of just moving across. So doing like a little bit by little bit and it's gonna be way more manageable that way. Whenever I'm like adhering two large pieces of fabric together like this, I like to just do a little bit at a time and it makes it way easier. So I've got my piece laid down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay that down on there. Press down. Make sure it's all nice and flush. So again, if you got like a brayer or something, you can totally use that. But you can also put wax paper down and really put your hands on it. But I'm just really pressing it down with my hands like this. And it's working great. So now I'm going to continue to apply my Mod Podge fabric to the areas that don't have it yet. Make sure you don't miss any spots. You can always go back and kind of add it to the edges if you miss an edge here and there, but just try your best not to miss any of the edges, not to miss especially any of the center area because you really want it to be nice and flush. That's how you're going to get it to stay on there for a long, long time and never want to peel off. I love, love, love. This is probably one of my favorite um, Mod Podge formulas. I just love the things you can do. I, I love fabric projects, but I'm not really um, patient when it comes to sewing. So there's so many awesome no-sew projects you can do with Mod Podge fabric. And that is right up my alley. You can do like patches, you can do um, appliques like we're doing here. You can add fabric. We did a really fun class a few weeks ago on Michael's Mini Classroom, um, putting fabric on shoes. So we took some canvas shoes and we added some really cute floral fabric. Um, that was a blast. So he just really transformed an old pair of shoes. That was fun. So um, yeah, there's just so many things you can do with this product. So continuing to add my fabric Mod Podge. And while you're pressing it down, guys, um, when, once you've applied your Mod Podge and then you're pressing down your fabric, if it gets through your fabric a little bit, if you feel it coming through the fabric, don't worry about that. It'll dry clear. Um, with Mod Podge, all of, almost all of our formulas are a little bit cloudy. You can, well, this one's super cloudy. You can see it's like a creamy, milky white, but when they dry, they all dry clear. So the base will dry completely clear. If there's any like white, you know, like milkiness coming through. You can see that there. Don't worry. It will all dry nice and clear when it dries. So don't, if you see it coming through like that, don't freak out. It's going to be okay. And so Jess, I just noticed the way that you're pressing your fabric down. So you're starting from the area that is already pressed down. Are you trying to prevent air bubbles? Yeah, that's a good point, Em. I am kind of starting with the area that's got my podge and then going that way. I'm kind of like, great point, kind of pushing the air out. So I'm not pushing it that way because that will just trap air. There, you can see there's no Mod Podge there. So I'm starting the side that has Mod Podge and pushing it towards the side that doesn't. So any air, I'm pushing it right out there so it can escape. That's a great point. I'm going to continue applying my Mod Podge. It's 
super, super, you guys can see how super duper easy this is. This would be great too for like kids. If your kids are really into art, this is a fun, you know, summer gift for them. If they are going to be crafting this summer to keep them nice and tidy, put, you know, some of their old favorite old PJs or something, I don't know, on, on here. Um, just really fun things you can do with scrap fabrics. And it's a really great gift to give for somebody who, who needs to keep their clothes kind of clean. I know I definitely do. <laughs> And it's just fun for kids to, you know, cut out pieces of scrap fabric and mod podge them onto a t-shirt and they can say they made it and they feel super cute. And it's a great way to be creative and stay busy this summer. Yeah, definitely. This is a really fun project to do with the family. Okay. So I'm just getting to the end here. I'm just finishing applying all of my, my mod podge and keeping it nice and thin, just a nice thin coat. You can see how easily it brushes on too. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than our original Mod Podge formula, like the, just the regular matte or gloss decoupage formula, um, but it's still nice and smooth. It still just glides on really easily onto the fabric. So I'm just going right up to the edge to finish this off. And then I'm gonna press down the rest of it. You can see again, got a little cloudy in some areas, but that will dry clear. Make sure I got it nice and there's no air bubbles. It's nice and flush. I'm going to press it down with my fingers. Make sure it's all nice and even. You can even go back now. Make sure not to seal your pocket shut. You can even go back now and add a little bit of Mod Podge to the edges and that will keep it from fraying. So you can see how it frays a little bit in some areas. You can even go back now with a little bit of Mod Podge and just really seal the edges of the fabric and that will keep it from fraying. And so Jess, most of our Mod Podge formulas, it obviously Mod Podge is a glue and sealer. You would put a top coat on to seal your, uh, you know, whatever you're decoupaging down. Do you need to add a top coat to this? You don't need to add a top coat to this. A lot of people do like to seal their fabric with um, the Mod Podge. I kind of prefer not to just because it does kind of change the texture when you add it to the outside. And I just like the texture of the fabric itself. Um, some people do, but I, I usually don't. I think just adhering it um, on the inside, you know, fabric to fabric using it as, as an adhesive works just fine. You really usually don't need to seal it, but that's kind of a, a matter of opinion. Um, but don't forget guys, my favorite part about this is that once this cures, make sure to follow the instructions in the label for time of cure. Once this cures, um, you can toss it in the washing machine, which I love, especially for an apron. It's gonna get messy no matter what you're doing, especially if you're cooking. Um, but I love that you can just, it's machine washable. Usually whenever I, I'm crafting, I say, if you handmade it, you should hand wash it. Um, but this is one of the exceptions where you can just toss this, we handmade it with love. We just toss it in the washing machine and not have to think about it. So that's one of my favorite parts about Mod Podge fabric. All right, any questions about the Mod Podge again? I don't think so, Jess. People are just excited. They're excited to learn about fabric Mod Podge, I think. Awesome, I'm so glad, that's awesome. It's a really, really fun project. There's so many things you can do. Yes. Um, and like I said, guys, don't forget Michael's Community Classroom. They, Michael's records all of these classes and has it on their Michael's YouTube channel. So they've got it on their Community Classroom page on, on michaels.com, but also on the Michael's YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch all of Plaid's other um, Mod Podge classes. We've done lots of Mod Podge classes with Michael's, um, including fabric. We do fabric a lot for these classes. So go ahead and check those out too. I bet you'll find some another project you really like. If it's something you're really interested in is Mod Podge fabric. Okay, so now guys, we can go ahead and we can start um, stenciling. So this is a really easy part. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my stencils. Um, and of course you can put whatever word you want. If you're making an apron for you. You can put your name, you can put dad or mom or your dad's name or whoever it is that you plan on giving this apron to. But you wanna go ahead and you wanna cut out the letters of the name that you're putting on. So I'm just gonna do dad again. So I'm cutting out my here. E. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was going to say, while you're cutting that out, I don't know if we mentioned it, but um, one of the best parts too about Fabric Mod Podge is that once you apply your Mod Podge and your fabric to your project, your fabric stays totally flexible, which is yes. super unique with our other uh, Mod Podge formulas. If you've tried to Mod Podge fabric to fabric before without using Fabric Mod Podge, you'd probably notice that it's going to be a little stiff, but it is yeah. so flexible and very, very durable too. That's a great point. It stays nice and soft, you guys. You can see here, so this was Mod Podge with Mod Podge fabric and you can see how it stays nice and soft. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, doesn't get cool. stiff and it doesn't get, yeah, like hard. Great point, Em. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna do the word dad. So I cut out my D and my A and of course I'm gonna use my D twice. So that is one of my favorite parts about these um, sign shop mesh stencils is that they are totally reusable. So um, 
you can just top, you know, as soon as you're done with it, we're going to rinse it off in some water and then we're going to let it dry and we're going to reuse it for the second D. So super easy to do. Um, if you're going to, you know, buy some of these stencils, you can, you can use them on so, so, so many projects. This ladder pack will last me through so, so, so many projects. I literally haven't had one of these stencils like wear out on me yet. We've been using these for months and like, this is a new pack, but I have tons of other ones I've used and I've been using them over and over and over. And I have not had one where I'm like, this one's done, time to retire it. They just last so long. Okay, so I'm doing a short word here. So I'm just gonna start laying it down. You can see here they're adhesive, which is really nice. So I have my A here. I always kind of like whenever I'm laying out stencils for like a sign or a name or something like this, I start with the middle letter and I make sure it's centered. And then I kind of go out from there. Um, or if it's, you know, an even amount of letters, I'll make sure I have my two middle letters and the seam, you know, between those two is in the middle and then I can go out from there. And that's why I make sure my word is centered. So of course we've got D-A-D. So I'm gonna make sure my A is centered. And then I'm gonna lay my D down next to that. And that's how I know that my word is going to be centered and even. I'm gonna lay my D down, make sure it's nice and flush on my apron. And then I'm going to grab my A and lay it down as well. And I'm gonna stencil these and then I'm gonna grab my D um, and rinse them off and use them again. I'll show you guys how it's reusable. So I'm going to do the A. Okay, so hang on to these because you wanna stick your stencils back on the back. And so I always hang on to those. Um, so to apply my stencil paste, this is one of my favorite ones. You can see I've been using it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. This is my um, brush applicator. So there's different kinds of applicators in the sign shop line as far as applying the stencil paste to your um, mesh stencils. So you can use this like little squeegee here. Can't even pick it up. Stuck to the table. You can use this really nice little plastic squeegee tool here. It comes in like three or four sizes when you buy the pack. Um, so that's great for like, you know, pulling down if we're used to like silk screening it's similar to that um or they also have a sweet like a squeegee tool that's like a silicone tool it looks like this one that's also great for applying the stencil paste um but i'm going to use this brush today because this is my favorite one i just like this one best it, it's really totally up to like just your preference i like to use this one best for fabric because i feel like i can get the paint into the fibers there and it's just my favorite one whenever i'm doing stenciling with these mesh stencils on fabric so go ahead and I'm going to grab my stencil paste and put a little bit of it onto my plate. You don't need very much, so I probably need way less than that, actually. But I'm going to put some of this onto my brush here. You don't need very much. You can see here, guys. You see how much I know my brush reversals are kind of stained. Yeah, but, you can see. Okay, good. There's very little paint on there. So I'm just going to start applying it into the design pick up a little bit more as you need it. And I'm just kind of pulling down. You can see here, it's not like stenciling. You don't have to do any swirling or pouncing or anything like that. You just need to make sure that you are working it right into the fibers there and do the same thing for my A. I'm just kind of pulling down. And you wanna make sure of course that your stencil is really flush because if it's not flush, you may end up with some bleeding, but it's super easy to do. Okay, so now quickly I'm going to pull that off. Oop, got a little bit of white there, but I kind of like that. It's like a distressed look. Yeah, I'm going to pull my D off and I'm going to go rinse my stencil real quick. Okay, yeah. Okay. And sometimes just by the nature of canvas and fabric, there is a little bit more texture to your surface as opposed to like tin or um, sanded wood. And so sometimes you do um, just get to touch up that stencil a little bit if you want a more. Um, like a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess a less distressed look, then you can definitely touch up your stencil and it's super easy. But I found just personally, sometimes that happens on my fabric and my canvas, but it very, very, very rarely happens to me on my metal and my wood and all of my smooth surfaces. And I actually really like that look. I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't do it on purpose. I probably should have put more paint in there, um, but I like how it looks distressed. That's actually, I think it's really fun, especially with this kind of yeah. like vintagey farmhousey apron with the bandana I've got going on. I think it looks kind of fun like that. So yeah, and just again. again. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, and of course, <laughs> Jesse loves that look, but if you didn't like that look, you could just replace your stencil right over mm -hmm. it, do it again, and it would look super opaque and uh, absolutely. full. Absolutely. Emma's absolutely right. Just apply more paint than I did. I did it kind of quick. I didn't apply much paint. So Okay, I want to let you guys know what I just did. So here's the D stencil that I just used there. And I just went, we have a sink right here in the studio. I went and I just rinsed it off with water. I just gently massaged the 
paint off with my fingers and now I'm just blotting out a paper towel. You can see it's back to being super sticky. The adhesive just completely reactivates when it dries um, and I can just reuse it right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply my D again, try to get it as centered as I can, press down, make sure it's nice and flush. And I'll try to apply a little more paint this time. You got really wanna work it in there. Like Emma said, the fabric is kind of textured this canvas. So just really work it in there. And my, again, I keep saying I have so many favorite parts of these stencils. I love that there's no bridges. I love stenciling. I love like the really crisp look you can get, but sometimes I just don't like the way the bridges look because you can tell that it's stenciled. I want it to look more professional than that. So this really makes it look like it was like printed or something like you hand painted it or you printed it um, because there's no bridges. So, okay, so much better, you guys. You can see I just did more paint and you get a nice crisp design. So again, I'm gonna put my stencils right in my water um, and I'll rinse those off later. Um, but there you have it, guys. You can see how super duper easy that was. Um, a really fun gift to give to your dad this weekend or to your mom or whoever you're celebrating Father's Day with this weekend. Um, super easy, super inexpensive and everything I used here, I bought at Michael's. So do we have any more questions then before we finish up? Nope, not right now. Okay, awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget um, the Mod Podge fabric and all the sign shop supplies you can buy um, at Michael's in store or online. Um, we are here a couple times a week in the Michael's Community Classroom um, classes, but we are also here for sure every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We do a really fun class called Paint Night Live. So if you guys like to paint, we do really fun paintings. Uh, we teach you a full painting in just about an hour. So it's me teaching or it's Andy Jones or Kirsten Jones. We have lots of great instructors and we always have fun. So if you guys haven't come to that class yet, whether you've never painted before or you've been painting for a long time, it's always a blast. So make sure to check that out. Yeah, um, and we will end up... Oh, I was going to say, I think you're about to talk about it, though. Something that's super exciting. This Friday, we're doing another class, um, Plaid is with Michaels, and we're going to be showcasing our brand new product that just launched in Michaels. Um, uh, so definitely check that out on Friday. Yes, Emma's right. We have, I was just about to say, we have a really exciting class this Friday right here in the Michaels Community Classroom page. It'll be Kira Valentine, and she'll be teaching you about our brand new product that we have at Michaels right now online, and it is called Folk Art Terracotta Paint. So I don't know if you guys have heard of the trend trash to terracotta, but you can take any of your old home decor pieces, whether it's terracotta pots or vases or candlesticks, anything you have, you found at the thrift store, you can turn into beautiful terracotta pieces for your home. So we're really excited about that brand new paint. So if you have any interest in that, make sure to check out the class we have on Friday right here in the Michael's Mini Classroom page. Um, so thanks again for joining us, guys. We hope you have a great Wednesday and we'll see you on Friday. Bye.